I oh, think, though, the artists have something that a lot of people don't have, and that is they get to work with her. He said the one, I think the Song of Solomon said, the, uh, Ecclesiastes said that working with your hands was one consolation of man. And look, at we're artists, and we work with our hands, and we create things. And I was just in a museum with paintings that were made four or five hundred years ago that blow my socks off. But the neat thing is that as artists that we can create things that, that live beyond us. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So what do you consider an artist? An artist? Yeah. What, my definition of an artist? Yeah. I am I really love great paintings. And so I don't like to put a definition to what an artist is. Because I don't I don't want to to take away from someone who um, you know, does uh, well, you know, Michelangelo really um, took art into just from being a craft to being something more, you know, to being something great, right? And that was, uh, that was Michelangelo. Was he the greatest painter? Oh, you got Vermeer, Velasquez. Um, and I'll depend on someone's Sargent. eye, too. Yeah, for landscapes, you got George Innes and uh, Albert Bierstadt. And uh, today, I know we got a guy, uh, what's his name? Oh, I can't remember it right now. He does Grand Canyon, cute, gorgeous. Wilson Hurley, he's really good. Um, but I'm studying art all the time. Yeah. You can talk <clears> about <throat> any genre. Well, yeah, uh, there's I, so I, many I, different levels of art, you can never get bored, and that's, that's the reason why I love it, because it's... It's a lifetime study. Well, it's beyond the lifetime. <laughs> lifetime? Well, yeah, beyond lifetime. I mean, I'm going to spend... I mean, I've spent... I was pretty much born drawing. First thing I remember doing was drawing. And then I was like, um, you know, and, and, then, and then I work at it every day, you know, like all day, you know, you know, and then, and then, um, and then I'm still, you know, I, I'm never going to learn everything. And in fact, that's art to me. What I enjoy is going to a fantastic museum. I'm sorry, I don't really, I'm not a big fan of pop art or modern art that much. Right. No, that's fine. Every, yeah. Or, uh, I mean, I actually physically got sick. I was at the St. Louis Museum, and they, and they had um, you know, these beautiful paintings on the bottom floor, right? But then you went up to the, um, the modern art section, and I'm like, what, what's going on? I mean, what? I mean, honestly, there's Dadaism, and there's, and there's it was a futurism, or formalism. You know, I, I know, I, I studied art. I studied four years, and I just don't understand. I mean, it's like, there's no aesthetics. They, they turn their back on everything traditional. That was what, that's what a lot of the, the I don't know, I don't know, but, but to well, me, if I, Hanks, if I get a hold of these people, I mean, certain, what are you talking about, I want them that, uh, the paintings that people don't understand, I want them to show them how to understand it. That's the reason why I'm doing this video. Well, I mean, too. I like, uh, David, um, what is that guy's name? David Hockney. He's a, he's a modern artist. I like him. Okay. Stuff. Of course, I like Chuck Close. Super, super realistic, you know. Um... Oh, I don't know. I like um, Chagall. Um, and, you know, I love Picasso. Picasso and... But see, Picasso's... Okay, Picasso's art was aesthetic. You know, you could look at the, the colors. It was beautiful. It, if you put that in an office room, it would, it would be gorgeous. Yeah. But, I mean, there's art that just, you know, just dog poop on the canvas. <laughs> That's Dadaism. That is. I don't understand it. I'm sorry. <laughs> But I mean, between say the uh, 15th century and the 20th century, oh, you're talking about Delacroix, David, um, Jericho. Jericho's *Wrath of the Medusa*, in my opinion, is the greatest painting ever done. Um, oh yeah, and the thing is, is for for someone like me, I've, I went to five years of art school. I grew up as an artist. I went to a really good art school. I worked at Disney uh, for a little while, an internship. Um, but the thing is, I've been around, you know, and I've, I've worked. I mean, there, I mean, you go and you see a, a sergeant, or, I mean, and he could just, you know, it's just, there's so much there. There is so much there. And, I'm, you know, I'm figuring it out, but, you know, my goal someday is to be a great artist. Am I there? I don't think so. You well, know? every artist doesn't think they're good enough, and that's just the way human nature is. Um, no, they I, want to be better, but... I'm humbled by studying artists. I'm humbled by it. I, I love it. I just... You know, a great Waterhouse painting, you know, a great, you know, you got the Pre-Raphaelites, who I love. Um, you got the Romantics, like um, um, Delacroix and Jericho. You got the classical art, like Poussin, Titian. Um, you got Rembrandt. You got uh, 
you know, you got you got all the greats, Vermeer, and you know, I'm a big Vermeer Caravaggio fan. Well, and then the American illustration I loved. Oh, Hopper, Homer, was the Homer? Uh -huh. They had a Homer there in St. Louis. Oh. I studied it for hours. I mean, well, I, I was there for two days. But I could stand, stand in front of Winslow Homer painting, a good one. And I could just look at it for an hour and a half. And what do you see when you look at that painting? And I was actually standing there mumbling. Because I figured out a lot of the stuff they're doing. We'll talk about that. I'll talk um, later. Yeah, yeah. But, okay, so um, as an artist, what do you... What do you when you look at a painting? What do you look at? Would you look at the concept? Do you look at the painting? Do you look at well, how they do first it? First and paramount is the concept. Okay. Secondly is the composition. Um, and the how how did they you know they use a triangle composition you know how do they how do they what formula do, are they using? Right. You know, is the horizon line in the middle or is it up above or what are they doing? You know, I mean that's 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 pretty cool. I mean I understand. Okay, I understand. They got the horizon line there. Okay, or the, um, like I saw George Caleb Bingham paintings yeah. there. And, uh, yeah. Now you look for the colors too, right? Oh, the colors. And, and the, the, colors. Well, the colors is what I'm really figuring out. Right. Is that there's a mysterious color that, that a lot of artists use. That I'm, I finally put my thumb on it. I actually understand. And I did a little test over here. A little test sample. Yeah. But I mean, um, oh yeah, the color. I mean, because, you know, I went to a really good art school. I studied with um, great, great teachers. Mr. Drummond, Mr. Larrabee, um, my uh, president of my art school, Joseph Gonzani, was a world-renowned colorist. Yeah. And he was a, also a symphonic uh, musician. Um, I took classes from him. Um, I even took, uh, when I was at Disney, I took classes from Bernie Hogarth, who was a great drawer. He's probably the most world-renowned drawer, you know. And I got to work with Aaron Blaze. He's my roommate. He directed Brother Bear. And, oh, yeah, I heard you talking about that. And I got to work with Glenn Keane, and my, my guy that I worked with, Matthew Callahan, directed uh, uh, Curious George. But I worked with a lot of good, great artists. Well, well, Glenn Keane, when he, in his office, he had surrounded by great drawings. He had, like, little clippings of, of Albert Durer drawings, you know, Michael so he, studies. He, he studies it when he's working. Watteau drawings. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Figure drawings. Yeah. Well, that, that, that's why, like, study. when I go to museums or art galleries and stuff like that, I always I look for that, what you were talking about. Well, I go between the 15th century and the 20th century. Yeah. Well, I, I look at all kinds of artwork. Yeah. I mean, something I, always grabs me. I say, oh, that would be nice if I could do something like that. Or or how did he do that? Or she do that? And um, Oh, Rosa Bonheur, they had one there that I studied for a long time. Yeah. And in my opinion, she was the greatest wildlife artist. Although today I like, I like Robert Bateman a lot and Stephen Lyman. Yeah. And um, Geico Leash is pretty good. Wilson, Nicholas Wilson is pretty good. I don't know. I, I love art to the point where I, 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 I could, you could take me to a museum, you know, and I could just, you know, I could tell you who did them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I could take you to the Louvre. I've never been there, but I could take you there and <laughs> say that's a, you know, that's a champagne painting or that's a, you know, I could tell you did them. So, mostly, mostly. Maybe I should take you on some of these trips and I'll be setting up. <laughs> Yeah, if you find a good museum, let me know. I'll be there. No, you uh, just come with me and we can chit chat with other artists. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I, well, yeah, time. Yeah, my thing is just my overhead. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta make money. Or, no, no, if I can, we can team up, hire you, and go for a trip. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I like modern art, but man, I mean, how can you put a, you know, a, a hopper against. I'm just depressed because I came back from that museum and I just uh, physically, you know, because I would like to be in museums, but the gatekeepers of museums are the um, these formalists that do that make decisions about what gets in. Right. And they they turn their they turn their back on traditional art a long time ago, a long time ago. Huh. So as a traditional painter myself, I'm on the outs as far as museums go. But you know, I don't know. We'll see. It might change. Yeah, but I mean.